this is Glenn Slender, Superintendent of the Luxembourg Casco School District, along with Gina Enderby, the district's registered nurse. We are sending you this video presentation to give you detailed information about the plan to return to school this fall. As you may recall, the district sent parents a survey earlier this month to collect your thoughts and opinions about sending your children to school in the fall. Following that survey, the district created a preliminary plan to return to school based on your responses to the survey, along with responses from staff members to a separate staff survey, as well as guidance from the Kewanee County Health Department. On July 15th, the LC School Board approved the preliminary plan. Shortly after the board meeting, I sent all district parents and staff an email with a copy of the plan. The district has now created a detailed plan to return to school. This detailed plan will go before the school board on August 5th for approval. Also, we wanted to share it with you before we ask you to commit to the way each of your children will receive instruction and the way they will be transported to school. Please watch for the second survey after August 5th. The district is working closely with the Kiwani County Health Department and others, including the district's health partner, Bell & Health, as we develop the return to school plan. In addition, we recognize that the pandemic presents challenges and variables that can change rapidly, and as a result, the plan is subject to change based on guidance from the Kiwani Health Department. The primary purpose of the plan is to provide multiple options for district children to receive instruction in a manner that is as safe as practicable. In addition, the plan has several goals. To maintain student and staff safety by using appropriate infection control and mitigation procedures, to provide a comprehensive education for all students, to care for student and staff social, emotional, and mental health needs, to meet the, the unique needs of each student, and to create flexibility in the process to respond to changing conditions. The body of the plan has nine parts. Governance, school operations, infection control and mitigation, teaching and learning, school safety and mental health, special education, English language learners, gifted and talent programming, as well as technology. Governance refers to how the plan was developed, how it will be approved, and how it will be implemented. Specifically, the plan was developed based on parent and staff input from surveys, as well as direct guidance from the Kiwani County Health Department. Guidance was also provided by Bell & Health, the CDC, the American Academy of Pediatricians, and the Department of Public Instruction. The plan will be brought before the school board for consideration and approval before being implemented. In addition, each school building has assembled a separate leadership team to determine plans that are specific to each school building. Finally, certain district policies, such as those regarding student attendance, visitors, and facility use, will be modified temporarily. School operations refers to the more practical manners of running school, such as class sizes, daily schedules, bus routes, etc. As such, all parents will be asked to make an initial commitment, some for the first semester and some for the first trimester, for, for how each of their children will receive instruction with the option to change that commitment for subsequent semesters or trimesters. Other school operations include establishing clean versus isolation areas for students or staff who are symptomatic, the plan will also include a modification to the district attendance policy following parents or allowing parents rather to keep their children home to receive instruction virtually and a modification to generally restrict visitors and use of district facilities by outside users. I'm now going to turn the presentation over to the district's registered nurse Gina Enderby to explain to you uh, all of the uh, components of the infection and control and mitigation part of the plan. Gina? Thanks, Glenn. Um, as Glenn was kind of stating, the infection control and mitigation refers to those practices for when a symptomatic person is present and practices that help prevent the spread of disease. The following points are measures being put into place throughout the district. 
Staff and or students who are ill will be required to stay home if they exhibit signs or symptoms of illness. Staff will be required to verify their symptoms and have a temporal temperature check daily prior to school entrance. Students and staff who are experiencing symptoms will not be able to return to school until they have met the criteria to return. If a student or staff member becomes ill while at school, they will be moved to their building isolation area. The district will follow the guidance of the Kewanee County Health Department if a student or staff member develops symptoms, is in close contact with a positive COVID case, or if he, she would test positive. Face coverings will be required for riding the bus and school entry. Each student will be provided with two cloth face masks, which are intended for use when social distancing is difficult. Face coverings will also be on the school's supply list. If a student loses or forgets a face covering, they will need to purchase one from the school office. Students will not be allowed on the bus if they are not wearing a face covering. Face shields can only be used if the school has provided a physician's note with a documented health or special condition. Hand washing will be promoted throughout the day, especially before and after snack, recess, lunch, switching of classrooms, before and after a cough or sneeze, and use of vending machines. Hand sanitizer will be in supply for each school. Individual gel hand sanitizer and sanitizing wipes will also be placed on the school supply list. Multiple entrances and exits will be identified for school entry and exit. Hand sanitizing stations will be available at entrances, in the classrooms, and common areas in the school. Only the bottle filling portion of drinking fountains will be available to staff and students. The traditional portion of each fountain will be covered or shut off. We will add a reusable water bottle with a straw top to the student supply list. Lunch and recess may be staggered to avoid contact with multiple students. Alternate spaces may be used for lunch. Shared snacks or treats will be discontinued for students and staff during the pandemic. If food items are manufacturally individually wrapped, such as goldfish crackers or Rice Krispie treats, they may be brought in. Uh, no homemade treats will be allowed. Desks and common seating spaces will be arranged to ac accommodate social distancing to the greatest extent. Plexiglass barriers will be used on multi-use tables. Masking will be required if social distancing cannot be achieved. Visual aids will be used to facilitate traffic flow and appropriate spacing. Visitors will be generally restricted from building access until further notice. Building HVAC systems have been adjusted to maximize the intake of fresh outside air and improved air filters have been installed. The following are for the infection control and mitigation for bus riders. Face coverings will be required for riding the bus. Students should be seated one per seat or one family per seat. Buses will run with approximately 50% capacity. We are asking for parents to make a commitment for how each of their children will be transported to school, ride the school bus or some other form of transportation, for the first trimester, for the primary intermediate school, for the first semester, for the middle and high school, for each child, depending on which building your child attends. The following are COVID-19 symptoms. Please note, these symptoms should be outside the student's baseline. Please do not send your child to school if they show one or more of the following. A temperature of 100.4 degrees or greater when taken by mouth or forehead, sore throat, new uncontrolled cough that causes difficulty breathing. For students with chronic allergies or asthma, a cough that is considered a change from their baseline, diarrhea, vomiting or abdominal pain, or a new onset of severe headache, especially with a fever. At this time, the CDC does not currently recommend these screening symptoms or temperature checks be conducted by schools. It is recommended that parents or caregivers um, to monitor their children for signs of infection and illness every day. Students who are sick should not attend school in person. 
Some questions that parents may have would be, what happens if my child has symptoms? At this time, it's recommended to keep your child home from school. They must stay home from school until they are symptom-free for 24 hours without fever-reducing medications. What happens if my child is in close contact with someone who tests positive? You will be notified by your local health department if you are considered a close contact. Keep your child home from school until advised by the local health department. Typically, this will be 14 days since the last exposure from an ill individual. What happens if my child tests positive for COVID? Keep your child home from school, isolate from others, monitor their health. Families should notify the local health department if the child attended school. Follow directions from your local health department. Typically, you can be with others after at least 10 days since symptoms first appeared and at least 24 hours with no fever, without fever reducing medications. As always, this information is subject to change based on CDC guidance. Thank you, Gina. Uh, teaching and learning refers to the details surrounding the operation, the options parents have for their children to receive instruction. These options are face-to-face, in-person, five days a week, a hybrid of in-person and virtual on an every other day basis. Please note this hybrid option is not available at the primary school and virtual instruction five days a week. Again, we are going to be asking parents to make a commitment for the first trimester for primary and intermediate school or first semester for middle and high school, depending upon which building your child attends. We will be sending out a survey to acquire this information once the board approves the plan. The board will consider this draft plan at a special board meeting on Wednesday, August 5th. Teaching and learning for grades K-2 for face-to-face -face instruction, families that choose this plan will send their children to school for live instruction five days a week. Students will be socially distanced as much as possible within classrooms and limited in their movement during the day as much as possible. Students will participate in related arts and Spartan time. However, each of these may be modified to fit the size of the group participating. Again, a hybrid uh, uh, between in-person and virtual instruction for 4K through grade 2 is not available. Regarding virtual instruction, students and families uncomfortable coming to school as planned above can choose a virtual learning option. Participating in this option will require a strong student and family commitment to the process. For greater detail, you can click below to see the virtual learning expectations. Um, those virtual learning expectations for grades K through 2 will be videos through Seesaw, which is the same platform that was used this past spring. Students at these grade levels will not be receiving live instruction as a class, but will receive individualized follow-up from their classroom teacher. With regard to teaching and learning in grades 3 through 12, for face-to-face -face instruction, Families will choose this plan, will send their children to school for live instruction five days a week. Students will be socially distanced within classrooms and limited in their movement during the day as much as possible. Students would participate in related arts and Spartan time, however, each may be modified to fit the size of the group participating. Option two, which is the hybrid between face-to-face -face and virtual instruction. During face-to-face -face instruction, the student attends for live instruction every other day. Students will attend virtually every other day opposite their scheduled live instruction. This would be done during the same time each day at their live instruction, and there would be a reduction in related arts courses for each student. In terms of virtual instruction, students and families uncomfortable coming to school can choose a virtual learning option. Participating in this option will require a strong student and family commitment to the process. For greater detail, you can click on the link or uh, recognize that the virtual learning expectations for grade 3 through 12 will be for your child to log in following their daily school schedule, while students will be paired with a classmate for each class to allow them to collaborate together. This collaboration and pairing may vary a bit to bit from class, uh, may vary a bit from class to class. School safety and mental health refers to the mental well-being of students and staff. While the district has been working to address the mental health needs of students and staff, 
since before the pandemic. We are increasing those efforts because the pandemic creates additional tension, stress, and anxiety. These efforts include additional professional development for staff, assurance that proper protective equipment will be available, and new social-emotional curriculum and or supports for all students. Special education issues include individual education plans or IEPs will continue to be supported as they are currently written within each building. Special education students will have a review of their IEPs within the first six months of school to determine if their individual IEP is meeting their needs and if services need to be adjusted based on supporting data. Special education IEP meetings and 504 plan meetings will continue to remain virtual throughout the school year. Gifted and talented programming and English language learner programming, uh, in those cases all services and the identification process will continue as normal. Students who are subject advanced and GT programs will receive the appropriate grade level instruction. Students will follow their individual learning plan. Students who receive, receive supports from the gifted and talented or their English language learner teacher will continue to receive those services. In regards to technology, the district will identify those students whose parents selected virtual learning and provide the appropriate accommodations in terms of hotspots, Chromebooks, etc. The district will outfit each classroom with the appropriate technology for virtual viewing of live instruction. District and building teams are developing plans to address concerns and needs for virtual learning in an in-person setting, an all-virtual setting, and a hybrid setting for parents and staff. District technology staff will work to standardize digital learning platforms such as Seesaw, Google Classroom, and Schoology for each building. The key points of this presentation are that the district will follow the plan to return to school to maintain as safe and a school environment as possible and still ensure high levels of learning for each child. Parents will have options for how their children will receive instruction, and parents will be asked to make a commitment for how their children will receive instruction and for how they are transported to school. The school board and administrative team recognize and understand the stress and anxiety that returning to school places on parents, students, families, and staff. Further, we recognize that there is no perfect plan that can satisfy the dual goals of maintaining student and staff safety and of ensuring high levels of learning for each child. With that said, we ask for your patience and understanding as we navigate through the process of returning to school in the fall. Thank you.